of six Catholic children and uh, I went to a Catholic school for my whole grammar school period it was a uh, astutely Catholic but by the time I was 11 I kind of demanded that I be put into a public school which my parents did for two years but then I started turning into such a little scalawag responding to the early Vibrations of the rock culture, wanting to have a duck tail, and all the accoutrements of a young ho daddy in 1957 or 58. And so I was put for a year into a fine young man's school. I was miserable at this prep school, but on the other hand, my mind sought constantly for a means of escape, and so I really fixated heavily on the ocean as a symbol. So I started, my, started surfing that summer. My, my identity became so tied up with surfing. And surfing was a stimulus, so strong, you know, it, it was really good for me physically, plus it got me going through the motions of finding things, exploring California. It's so precarious, you know. I mean, you're in, literally inside a, a tube of water. You're in the eye of the wave, and it, it, it's terrifying. It, it really is. But it's also exhilarating, extremely psychedelic. Your senses are just barraged by energy. I've been doing it for 12 years. And I, st I still relate to it, but it's not, I don't, you know, I used to be a surfer, you know, fir first and foremost, you know, and now I might think, well, but I'm really a mammal. Yeah. Oh, those things just get you so loaded. Yeah, they're just, they're just the finest thing that ever happened. Gets people high. We got, got Mike and I high. got those people so loaded at that, mu at that party that we were at that everybody forgot, they just forgot any, any trips. Everybody was just sitting there, you know. They were just yeah. sitting there digging each other and digging me and and digging digging Michael and and it was you know, it was a primo feeling, really a primo feeling. We had a really high collection of people there, you know. That really helped. Pot is almost a constant. Smoking weed. The first J I smoke during a day always is is unique, you know, because it's a kind of a fresh impetus to the nervous system, and so. Oops. Overall effect is one of kind of being a tranquilizer, actually. My status piece for the season. Hand-printed Christmas card. The idea I got from the tarot, and one of my favorite cards, and a card corresponding to me astrologically, is the hermit. Sometimes I project into my myth qualities that are ascribed to this, this particular sign, which is a, uh, I think it represents a person, or an aspect of the personality, the evolving personality, where it's reached not the final degree of enlightenment, like you can't call him really a master of wisdom, but uh, yet he's the attained degree of wisdom or world knowledge, sufficient that he has a responsibility to, uh, to turn on his brothers, you know, his fellow man. <laughs> Hello. Sure. That's Dave Kinnon. That's Sharon. That's my brother, Keith. This is my sister, Patty. Mm. Right. What are you doing? Right. Getting loaded. What have you been doing? Oh, nothing. Um, I just came by to see some of your pots and stuff. I might buy some for Christmas presents. If you have any. 
I went to Orange Coast College, a junior college, for a year and a half after high school. Although I, you know, I didn't know then why I was doing it, nor do I do, nor now. You know, this, I, this is what we do next. And uh, I got turned on to drugs kind of when I was going there. And then at the same time, I got caught by my parents for turning on, which caused, you know, just shrieking. Just my son died on June 16th, and uh, I got sent to the shrink to get better. At the end of that summer, I took acid, and it uh, it just blew my mind. Like it was so extreme an experience. Is a real acid trip, you know, is like it's beyond pleasure, it's beyond pain, it's beyond complacency, it's beyond fear. You know, you get you just fucking get your mind blown. Okay, how things been going? Uh, we had a pretty good good last December because I sold a bunch of pottery, so we didn't have to come in again. Oh, you did? Good for you. Um, did you keep a list of how much you made? Oh, I made about 75 bucks. You didn't keep a record? No. Because <laughs> I gave so many of them away. That I'm not even sure Are you still doing this? Yeah, but I haven't I haven't any now. I've been doing a little carpentry, but mm -hmm. like I'm doing it for, for a brother downtown, and he's got about as much money as I do. I think I've made about, like, making somewhere upwards of 25 bucks a week. <laughs> Sharon? Yeah. You still working with a helper? I was uh, in a period of taking a a lot of LSD and living in, actually living the, just the archetypal dropout existence in town here. And uh, when you're, you know, when you're taking psychedelic chemicals, you're really uh, sensitive to the fact that what you've normally recognized as being reality, you know, how your consciousness reacts to the everyday bullshit. Uh, there is just a fraction of what's there. And so, usually you kind of undertake a search to find uh, what you think is real and what, what isn't, what will verify uh, the experiences you've had, you know, taking these drugs, <coughs> and what doesn't. And the tarot, the tarot isn't LSD, but uh, LSD and the tarot are both involved in uh, self-realization. You have been looking for work, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Well, I... Okay, see, how... You know, like, I'm not idle. I built that bedroom before you came. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of the light. Where? That extension out there. I may build on an extension of the bathroom. But, uh, I live in a... I don't know what you'd call the community I live in, but nobody's got any money. So, like, okay, I work well, every well. week. But sometimes <laughs> I do it for free. I, I used to work at the Akron. About a year ago, I worked at the Akron as a display man. But, uh, besides some, uh... I mean, I, I couldn't work for the Akron because of some of the things they were selling. I just couldn't believe it, mm -hmm. you know, like they were selling DDT and things. You know, that's like committing suicide slowly to assist in, uh, you know, that destructive a phase of uh, the marketplace. You know. about every psychedelic except for organic mushrooms. Uh, I don't know how many times I've dropped. I could probably estimate around 150. Most of it's been a waste. Most of it's just been a burden on my nervous system, frankly. Maybe the 150 doses, you know, trips I've taken, 10 really stand out. You know, 10 really were psychedelic experiences. I just didn't take enough or I took too much in the wrong place, you know. You can really goof taking the things. That's for sure. If you're in a hung-up state, and you take them, I mean, uh, it's going to focus right in on that, usually. And you can have what is called a bum trip, which is just meaning you get swept away by some re unresolved aspect, and you can't get free of it. You know, bum trips are all kinds of things, but they can really be avoided, I think, a lot. I did it two years. I did it last year, and I didn't like it at all, so I didn't do it for a year, and then I did it um, two weeks ago for the Christmas formal. <laughs> <laughs> for the Christmas formal, it's a fucking sacrament. <laughs> Just see, you know, because Christmas formal last year is so funny. I thought, well, maybe, I didn't like Mexican before, but I had such a good time. <laughs> it was just so funny. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's a nice chemical. I mean, it yeah. stimulates nice parts of your consciousness. You know? mm -hmm.
And I think these are times where if we're going to survive on a very large scale, we have to uh, stop acting blindly, you know, acting by impulse and by, on an ego level and uh, investigate what we really need as a whole being and act in accordance to the needs of the species rather than what uh, TV tells you that uh, you ought to be. And mostly in terms of what you consume and what you can afford and what you own. And acid definitely does that. It cuts away the bullshit. No stocks or bonds? Do you have any court-ordered payments? Charles Fort Alimony, Payments Probation Department? Mm -hmm. Are you attending college or receiving any training? I'm receiving lots of training up at the pottery school, but it's all, it's just on a, there, there's no capital involved, it's just uh, brotherly love. You know? Those are beautiful sized buttons. Fat ones. I thick. hung up with some Navajo Indians in mm -hmm. uh, American Na Native American church ceremony. Out of sight. That's the last time I've taken a psychedelic. It was so good I haven't wanted to since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They know how to use that medicine. So good. Well, if you take a cap of mescaline or psilocybin or LSD, you're taking a cap of whatever uh, somebody decided they were going to make in market, you know, because this stuff is part of the marketplace. Yeah. And so I don't take commercial LSD. I just don't do it because I've, you know, too many fucking times I've taken a drug and in 20 minutes I've known I'm, I've taken some bum fucking drug. So peyote, there's no doubt. You know who made it. The fuzz, there's kind of this spiny fiberglass-like fuzz in the center. And I'm not sure what the chemical content is, but it's repulsive to eat. The, actually, the fresh peyote cactus is repulsive to eat. Need oranges with, orange. need one piece of orange with a button, and it tastes really good. It's a good combination. You just, you just take the fuzz out and uh, put it in water and make a tea out of it. You should boil it for about two hours at least. Make a tea out of it, chug it down as quickly as you can. Chase it with an orange. And, uh, don't eat anything before, because uh, it'll come up. The psychedelics, if you, if you relate to them as a sacrament, you will have the experience more times than not that you would expect of, of a sacrament. Like when I had my first communion, I waited, you know, like I was so prime. I was seven years old, and I went, uh, and got the host and swallowed it, and I sat there and waited, and the priest had give me a nudge and said, go on, because there were a bunch of kids after me, because nothing happened. But I can guarantee it, man, if you take a psychedelic, something will happen <laughs> every time. Heaven or hell, it's all within you. You know, there's nothing in the LSD that isn't in you. You know, all it is is a catalyst. I want to go hiking. <laughs> Let me at it. Get me out of this town. Man, I lose all my energy at first. I just kind of... I know it. Plop. And I don't want to plots around here because we got to drive. That's a, oh, yeah, that's good. Psychedelics, man, that's another good thing about them. They turn you on to levels of play that you'd never have the hair, you know, to uh, break your facade yeah. to do. And you need it. It's in the organism. You need to play. You need to just get up and nudge your pal, you know, and go through a couple of boom, 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 you know, and shit like that, yeah. making faces.
Uh, incredible lack of games to play. More than anything. That's uh that's why I like to come up here on Tiger Dallas, because there's, there's nothing you can do to match it, you know. So you don't have to do anything. Except to be with it. I'm trying to be as still as possible so that I can feel my body and feel nature as best I can. I feel really good. I feel really good. I don't know. It's hard to say it in words. Peyote doesn't let up. <laughs> uh, really merged with the, the rest of the energy around me. I feel really good. Probably, I must have gotten contact high. I'm so good. It looked um, mm, psychedelic. This clean is so earthy. lightning flashes out of the corner of my eye. That's a sign that I'm really loaded. The Brotherhood of Man. I really believe in it. And that belief is probably due in part to acid trips because I've experienced it. You know? Or I felt that I was experiencing some incredibly real living link between myself and the rest of the human organism. And I believe in that vision. You know? C'est beau. <laughs>